Good evening, Richard. A very warm welcome on a very cold evening. Pleasure to be chatting to you again. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. You're not half wrong about the cold, are you? We were just saying before, weren't we? How it's... I know the, everyone's talking about it, but you know, you're not British. You can do it talking about the weather. And I've got a lot of colleagues over in the in the states, and we're like, "Oh my god, it's minus five. And they're like, "Minus five, really?" Like, they're not really bothered about it. You know, they get much worse over there. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I I was out this morning, minus four. You know, and there's nothing worse than carrying on with metal tools and everything like this, and your hands are freezing. And you think, "I just want to be in the house by a nice warm fire." Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I mean, it's, you see, you know, people working outside in this weather, and you know, they're so stoic about it. No one's really moaning. It's, if anyone's moaning, it's the people working in from home or working in the offices, like me. You know? So there you go. <laughs> anyway, let's, we're not here to talk about the weather. We're here to talk about your well, your second step within Freemasonry. In all fairness, yeah, you've had your initiation. Uh, you entered as an entered apprentice. Um, not so long ago that you became a fellow craft. How was it? Um, it was good. I actually really enjoyed uh, the second ceremony. Not in it, not that I didn't enjoy the first one, but I suppose the first one sort of happens to you, whereas you, and you are guided through it and you do have to do some things. But like in the second one, it's you. I, I felt like I was more of an active participant in it, which I thought was it was good. I really enjoyed that part of it and. Uh, because you could prepare for it, if that makes sense. You know, you I could kind of do my homework a little bit and, you know, make sure that I was going in, you know, confident in that I could do well that what I needed to do. So, yeah, I enjoyed the, the second one. Yeah. And what did you learn from it? Did you get anything from it? What, what's a high point of it? Um, I think what I've started to develop with it, um, after the first one and after doing some reading around the first one, you know, sort of with some of the resources that you sent through and after speaking to sort of various other brothers within the lodge and obviously now with this one on top of it, I've started to, I think, perceive a sort of story, I think, you know, and I think it's, there's nothing secret, you know, it's, it's, it's quite clearly sort of stated, but with the second one, I'm, I'm s s making the connections between some of the things that you're told in the first ceremony and then in the second one as well, seeing how it makes a bit more sense. Um, and I, I'm sure that's only going to continue, you know, as I move on to, the, you know, the third ceremony and uh, possibly, you know, the fourth one with the uh, uh, Royal Arch and things as well. So, yeah, no, it's I found it, I got a lot from it, I think, actually. And I, I felt more of a part of the Lodge, actually, which was nice. It, it, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because obviously on the first one you go in and it is the unknown. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit bewildering, I think, is probably the word you could use. <laughs> Very much so. And everything sort of goes over the top of your head. You, you, yeah. you are just part of it. Yeah. The second one, you get, you've got the story. And I suppose that's where you're going with the story. Yeah, yeah and it's I can understand... I think I got perhaps my first glimpse into sort of the reason why it is the way it is. Because I think it's one thing to sort of to participate in it and then there's part of you that's like well this is just the way it is and i'm just going to do it the way that i've been told because that's just how everyone else has done it but i think the second time around i think i started to get an understanding of like ah so the reason why we do that this way is for this reason so i start I've, and i think that's only going to develop hopefully as a you know i go through more of it and you know perhaps even when i start to do other parts roles within the lodge i think it'll only make more sense when i see it from that side as well so yeah really interesting I think it's great that you've actually got that connection quite early on because there is a connection between when you first come into the lodge and your third and fourth steps within Freemasonry. You know, so it's good that you've got that connection quite early on. Yeah, and I'm sure. I, who knows? I might have got it completely wrong as well. I mean, I don't think I have, but you never know. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if. You know, a couple of years down the line, I'm doing something else in the lodge, and I'm like, oh, actually, no, that's that's just not what it means. It means this instead. So, but I like the fact that it's not explicitly stated. There's there's a sort of there's a subtext to it, and there's there's a degree of well, there's a there's a great deal of allegory and symbolism within it that I think you could spend a lifetime unpacking. You know, which is nice. It means it's not finite. I think you know, it feels like there's a much deeper resource as a as a, as an activity or a ritual, I suppose. Very much so, and I, and I think one of the joys of it, and probably one of the things that you're getting out of it, because 
one of your hobbies is enactments, enac isn't it? It's taking part in civil war type events and everything like that. So you can yeah, have I a mean, history. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so my period more specifically is, you know, Viking Age and Saxons and things like that, you know, not quite horned helmets, but not far off the mark. And, um, but yeah, there's, there's, there is a sort of, as fun as it is, and there's, you know, as it's an activity and it's there's a competition in it and there's, there's a friendship and a sort of a fraternity to a degree as well, which is, you know, there's obviously comparisons there. But I think as well, there is, um, as with everything, there's a sort of philosophy of it. Like, I mean, you can probably, it's probably, get, you know, not explicitly stated or discussed by most people, but like, why are you doing it? You know, what is it that you're trying to sort of achieve? And I think obviously I, I studied uh, history at university. I have a massive interest within history. Um, but there's a there's a sense of like there's a sense of human connection. There's a sense of stepping in footsteps that have already been stepped in to a certain degree. And I think that again ties in with the Freemasonry, sort of knowing that the the steps that you're taking in the ritual and the the things that you've been asked to do have been done by every single other member of that lodge. They've been done by every single other Freemason that went on to become beyond free you know, a, a, an entered apprentice, yeah, you know, or a you know fellow craft, you know. So it's there's this sense of time a bit and a sense of heritage and legacy and tradition i guess tradition is probably the way you could encapsulate that all in one sentence but tradition is a really interesting thing why do why do humans do the things that they do and the way that they do them and this feels like you're actively engaging in a tradition which is quite alien which is interesting so yeah there's a lot there's lots from back well obviously your next step is that um really a master mason is the, the next step that you get to look forward to the third step within Freemasonry. Yeah. yeah. How do you think that's going to go? <laughs> I'm nervous about it a little bit. Uh, I think because now that I've done the first two, I think I have an understanding to a certain degree of like what my participation within it will be. I think I have an, I would be surprised if it was vastly different from what has already gone before apart from the messages and the, the information and the stories and things but you know in terms of what i have to do i think i've got a good understanding of it but i'm nervous because it's you know like i don't want to mess it up i want to learn it properly you know i want to do a good job um but like with the, the first one and like with the second one i'm more uh, excited really than nervous about it I'm, I'm excited to sort of take that next step i feel much more Strangely, I feel much more interested in it now than I was when I first started. I'm not sure if you've got if you can sympathise with that. I don't know, but when I was first started, I was intrigued more than anything, and I was curious. But now I'm actively like, oh, I wonder what that, wonder whether that's going to crop up in it, or wonder, you know. So I, I'm excited. I, excited is the right word, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good way of describing it. An excitement about it's like having a very good book and. You've read one or two chapters and you want the next one to come uh, just so you can follow that story through. And uh, that's the way I perceive it anyway. It, it, it's a very good book. It's a great book for learning from. Yeah, and I think it's because I know that the I have, because I've spent a bit more time with members of the Lodge and you know even a, a, another Lodge as well. It's like, I, I think because of that, I have a bit more insight into what comes next and what comes after the Master Masonry you know, sort of level so I think there's another part of me and I'm trying to sort of calm this one down because I don't want to rush anything but there's another part of me that's like oh I can't wait to to do that maybe or I can't wait to to get my teeth stuck into that you know so I, I'm also kind of very conscious of the fact that this is kind of the final stepping stone before Freemasonry kind of opens up to a certain degree there's lots of other things you can then do sort of past this point um but then as I say there's you know I'm trying to sort of quell that one a little bit and be like, well, it's it's happening in the right time and the right pattern. And you should appreciate this stage of the journey too, for what it is, because you will never do it again. Once this is done, you know, you might see other people do it, but you won't be in those shoes again. So trying to make the time for it, you know? I think that's a very good note to sort of draw this to a close. Um, leave you excited about the next step in your journey. Yeah. Uh, we have to leave something for you to hopefully anticipate. You never know, you might get it right, you might get it wrong. And that's yeah. the, that's the joy of it all. I'll mm. probably get it wrong, yeah. But I'm I'm still excited nonetheless, you know, see what it holds. Rich, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm so pleased that you're enjoying this journey. Long may it continue for many, many years. Mm. Mm. We'll chat again once you've gone through the next one.
Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time, Rob. Pleasure as always. Thank you very much, Rich. See you later, mate. Thank mm-hmm. you.